Well, I've driven past this antique mall seven million times, and today was the day that we decided to pull into it. So this is Cackleberry Antique Mall. <laughs> I love the name. Uh, we're gonna head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. So, here we go. So directly in the door of this antique mall, there were a bunch of glass cases and I decided to take a peek through the cases and I noticed a figurine down here. I suspect it is a California pottery figurine, but I'm not sure who the maker is. There were also some Artesania Rinconada figurines, a lot of them, as you can see. There's a toucan, a tiger, a cat, and even in the background there, uh, there's a few more. And down on the shelf below, if we get down there, there are additional figurines. You can see that there is a llama, a winged horse, a bird. And of course, you know that I had to ask for a key to get in there and check out some of these figurines. So look at the collie, the collie back there. I mean, come on. So here are the figurines that I ended up picking out pretty much all of them. <laughs> I am absolutely obsessed with these figurines from Uruguay. I'm suspecting that most of them are Artisania Rinconada, however, there could be some other oddities in there. These bowls here also captured my attention. I thought that they were $29 for the entire stack. It turns out they were $29 a piece. I had to think about that really, really hard because um, that was a lot of money, but I ended up buying all of the bowls for $29 a piece. As you can see, they've got some piano babies in here. There is a pelican. There was some nice things in here. The case was not locked, and I wasn't sure if that was intentional or not, so I did let them know that, hey, this case is unlocked. But the, it was supposed to be unlocked, so um, <laughs> it was not the end of the world. You can see there's a shorebird down there. Now here's a closer look at these bowls. You can see they are marked $29 a piece. For the life of me, I cannot figure out who makes these, but I know that I've seen them before. And um, so if you know who it is who makes these, please let me know in the comments because I am tired of researching and trying to figure out who makes these bowls. And the mark on the bottom just looks like squigglies to me. <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah, so I did end up buying those bowls for $29 a piece, which I feel could be high, but stylistically and artistically, I feel like I can get $50 a piece for those bowls. So I have a little wiggle room, um, thinking that I can at least get $50 a piece and hopefully if I can find the artist, maybe they can go for a little bit higher than that. This little girl was very adorable. I think that she is probably a hobbyist piece, possibly Atlantic mold or Holland mold, but I did not turn her over to look. We've got a few Nescafe cups there. I have bought and sold those from the Goodwill in the past. You can see they've got some treasures on this back shelf here. And so I did kind of breeze through here. They had some collector's plates, a few teapots, various odds and ends. I did notice this ashtray and it looked to be recycled glass, so I tipped it over, but I'm not sure that Fire and Light actually made ashtrays, so I ended up setting that back down. Got a Viking glass duck here with the original sticker, which I found to be interesting. It was $18 though, and I didn't feel like there was much of a profit left for me after I would have paid $18. So um, the poor duck stayed. Now this figurine was very interesting. Um, it was marked made in Uruguay, just like the Artesania Rinconada. However, 
it was, it had sand applied to it and rice, it looks like. It was a very interesting elephant and I like interesting and I like weird. So I grabbed that. There was also this figurine. It is also a bear, same style. There you go. First, I honestly thought they were maggots. And then I was like, wait, no, those are definitely rice kernels. If kernels is what they are. This is a crystalline vase. It is pottery. I love the crystalline glaze on it. I have not, I don't think I've ever seen it in pink before. In the back, there is a galley uh, knockoff. It's a reprodu- it's, it's fake galley. Um, it's kind of a popular fake galley. And so... I usually steer clear of that. And Galley is a cameo glass. So hopefully that helps you in understanding what I'm talking about. <laughs> there was a lot of really nice glass on that shelf, uh, but nothing that really stood out to me. You can see this antique mall just goes on forever. got some blue glass here. I did like that blue trinket box there at the top. Looks like some Delphite blue and then we've got the Fenton there. Lots of Corningware. Despite what you may see on eBay, it is not worth that. <laughs> it's not worth $2,000. These were treasure craft. What actually it actually surprised me. I did not realize that these were treasure craft, and I was kind of surprised when I turned them over and saw the treasure craft marking on the bottom. This lamp was a very decent price. It was forty dollars for the lamp with the shade, and I felt like that was a really good deal. But I really don't need any more lamps. I like the contrast of the black handle and the yellow glass of that pitcher. These reminded me of Sasha Brastoff, but you could see there on the back they had a different marking on the back that I did not recognize that signature. I have bought and sold this creamer and sugar set before, but I'm not, I can't remember who makes it. We've got a Murano tabletop lighter here. It has the Bolacante in it with the Aventurine, the gold dust there. It's really nice, but it was priced a little bit too high for me to buy and resell. The vibes in this booth were very, very festive. You can see all of the lovely vintage Christmas here in this booth. Uh, I just, I had to have a moment to take it all in. It was delightful. We've got some Pyrex here. The prices on the Pyrex at antique malls are usually too much for me to make a profit because Pyrex is simple to look up and usually people know the value of Pyrex. I'm thinking I'm never going to see the entire antique mall in an hour. And that's really all we've got before they close. This piece of glass did catch my eye. This appeared to be older than the rest. The others looked to be mid-century. This looked to be a little bit older than that. I'm not sure who makes this, but I loved the contrast of the amber with the cranberry. And it appears to possibly be Venetian. I'm not positive about that. But I absolutely loved it, and so it went into my cart. This art glass also captured my attention. And it is a perfume bottle. There were no markings on it. It kind of reminded me of a piece that I had picked up at, at Goodwill recently. Got some nice bedroom art back there. Andrew would have been all over the bedroom art, trying to convince me to buy it and put it in our bedroom. The bell was an interesting piece. The 
got a nice wooden Buddha there. Now this little guy caught my eye. He is marked Takahashi. And you will be able to see that in a moment when my camera decides to cooperate. This is my backup camera that I'm using because my other camera had died. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So yes, this is a Takahashi little egg cup. Unfortunately, I could not buy it and still have room for resale. We've also got a cockatoo back there. It is an art glass cockatoo, but it is not of Murano quality. I did like this Mexico art pottery bird. I thought that was nice. The last one I bought actually had a crack on it. This beautiful glass caught my attention as I was exiting the booth. Unfortunately, at $39.95, there just wasn't much room for me. You know, I buy these things for resale, so I have to have a little wiggle room there. That does not mean that it's not an okay price for it. It just means that I cannot purchase it for resale. There was a lamp on the back shelf here that did catch my attention. And I did really like it, but it was marked for $85, and it looked like it needed to be rewired. It needed a little TLC, and I just wasn't that committed to the TLC for $85. You can see there's some really nice pottery in this glass case. It's got a little stingle there in the back too. This, this poor little hillbilly hound was sitting on the shelf and it was $12. Now this is either made by Grindley or possibly um, Morton Pottery. There were a few pottery companies making the hillbilly hounds and I do have a little collection going. Um, they're small and they're easy to collect, but I just wasn't sure. At twelve dollars, it was it was kind of a collector's price, but I know that I can go out and I can find them for a few dollars. So I ended up leaving him behind. There was an Eldrith pie plate here. It was marked on the back second, which means that it was a pie plate that Eldrith was not necessarily proud of, but they didn't want to just throw it away, and so they sold it as a second. I do apologize that the camera footage is a little bit shaky here. This camera does not have a stabilizer, so it is a little wonky. Got a few candlestick holders here. I loved this booth in the back corner. It was super cluttered. I loved it. I loved the lighting on it. It reminded me of like an old country store, and uh, it was... It was delightful. It really was. There was a lot to take in. Now I did notice this art glass bird here in the case. It was $48.95 firm. I got the feels that this bird could be Italian, possibly Murano. I just wasn't positive about it, and so I figured, you know what, I've, I've spent a good amount of money already today. Do I really need the bird? Probably not. Uh, and I did decide to leave him. This art glass bowl reminded me of a Murano bowl that I have bought and sold in the past. However, he was a little bit more scrawny. This was actually marked on the bottom with a sticker made in Mexico. So it's interesting to see this bowl after having bought and sold an actual Murano bowl and seeing the difference in quality. It, it is kind of interesting. We've got some cozy kittens there made by Holt Howard. I always love seeing those. A 
especially love seeing them when I find them at the thrift store for two dollars. Well, look at that. Dagny found the praying hands again. <laughs> she wins. I am a slacker. I like the design on this. It actually reminded me of Bjorn Winblad, but it was not. She's doing her happy dance. That's Dagny's happy dance. This booth was really cool in like a creepy cool kind of way. I was kind of digging it. And I liked the doll heads and the way that they used jewelry. Now I did stumble across an entire booth full of books and the first one I noticed was this New Cumberland Frontier, which New Cumberland is not too far from us. I did end up putting that book back because I found one better. I actually ended up finding this book down here, Cumberland County. This is where we live. Uh, we buy these books a lot, these old history books, because we metal detect and we love seeking out new locations to metal detect. We also metal detect in Perry County. But I ended up with the Cumberland County book. You can see there. It was $30. And I think that one was also $30. And so I wasn't going to buy New Cumberland because we don't metal detect in New Cumberland hardly at all. Now I found this Jacquard coverlet and this was super exciting because the last Jacquard coverlet I bought was for two dollars and I sold it for two hundred and something dollars and that was back when I first started picking and thrifting so this one was forty dollars you can see that it, it there appears to be a little bit of run in the colors I'm not sure if that's why it was discounted or maybe I'm just imagining that and it's intended to be like that but in any case, you can see it is it is signed there on the bottom. Usually it's dated and signed, but these usually sell for a couple hundred dollars. So for only 40 bucks, of course I was going to buy the Jacquard coverlet. And I really liked the colors of it as well. So absolutely beautiful. A lot of the times they come in just red and white. Uh, the last one that I bought was just red and white there wasn't any other colors in it so now I did like these canisters on the top shelf here but it was they were actually marked not vintage or not antique so I thought that was a nice touch you didn't have to reach up and pull them down to figure that out they just went ahead and put it on the tag there were a few bunt pans there, or, or bunt something or other. Dagny threw the price tag down she fixed it. <laughs> I liked the carved bird, but it was a little too spendy for me, so I had to pass on it. This is amazing. This is Sibis porcelain. I've talked about Sibis in the past. It could even be pronounced Sibis. But um, it is made by Bolsla Sibis, who also makes Cordy. And Cordy uh, is a lot of the times figurines with like spaghetti hair and whatnot. But Sibis was the original porcelain, and it is very fine porcelain. Absolutely stunning. And I was obsessed with this figurine. It was a little too pricey for me, but I absolutely loved it. And I also loved that purse. I think it may have been a Whiting and Davis, but I did not actually take it out to look. I'm pretty sure with that mesh, it was more than likely a Whiting and Davis. There was an art glass pair on the shelf. I liked the looks of the bottom and it was only for $12 and so I did snatch that off the shelf as we were heading to the checkout. But I did not miss this. <laughs> I was literally walking by and I spotted this tobacco jar. Um, or 
biscuit jar. I think it could be used as either, but I recently sold a red one, and so the green one just, like, screamed at me as I was walking by, and I I was like, oh my gosh, Dagny, wait, wait, <laughs> that's $10. We've got some chenille, 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 um, some chenille pieces in there, some Christmas decorations. I will need to bring Michael back because he loves the Christmas all year round, and they had some really neat Christmas stuff here in this booth. And that's all I could think about was, oh my gosh, Michael would love this. This is a Burmese glass dish. I suspect it is the base to a fairy lamp. We've got some Wade Whimsies and a fat cat. Of course, Dagny spotted the fat cat. I kind of liked it. And I like the speckled glaze on it. I did turn it over to see if there were any markings. And there was a little bit of residue from a sticker, so... I did pass on the fat cat, but I did like it. Got some egg coddlers there and an acro agate urn. Howdy doody. I saw a picture that matched these glasses recently, but I can't remember where it was. I did end up buying this ashtray. I liked that it was shaped like a flower, and I figured that with those sectioned dishes and or the sectioned off areas in the center, it could be used as possibly a makeup dish or something else. So I did buy this ashtray. Now, as we were checking out, I happened to be glancing through the cabinets again and I noticed this swan. It is a beautiful Melifiore swan um, and it's got yellows and, and it's just absolutely stunning. So I did buy the swan while well, the cat was judging me for my decisions. I also looked through here and I found a few other pieces as well. You can see there is an alicite finial there made by Aladdin. Um, this glass finial, they had $12 on it. These typically sell for 20 to 25. So there's not a huge profit to be made there, but I mean, there's a little bit of profit and I am the crazy lamp lady. So of course I'm going to buy the alicite finial. And beside that, there was a trinket box. Uh, it was a Redware Eldrith trinket box. Those of you who watch my channel frequently know that I buy a lot of Eldrith, and my favorite Eldrith is the Redware. So this Eldrith Redware trinket box was perfect, and I absolutely loved it. I have not seen another Eldrith trinket box, so I, I decided that I would take that for $12. And that pretty much sums up our trip to the antique mall. My camera is about to die, but our total spend was $447. I feel like that last minute biscuit or tobacco jar, I've seen them described as both. That was a great find because my last one sold for $200. Even with a little bit of damage that can't be seen with the lid on, I think we're going to do all right on that. So I'm going to leave here and head home, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Later.